Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about the differences between candidate programmers and professionals. So let's get into it. So the question in question was posted on a video I made which is named With so many people learning to code, why is there such a shortage of developers? And the short version of that video is basically that I explained that the requirements on being a professional grade software developer is higher than what the average candidate uh, knows uh, or what they're able to produce. Uh, most candidates are at a like depending of course on what type of developers we're talking about now but let's just talk about front end because that's probably the one with the most amount of bootcamp level developers and a standard boot like a class like a average bootcamp developer who has nowhere near the necessary skills in order to work effectively at the high end or like the large scale projects. So uh, basically the question is can you go into depth about the differences? And I mean I kind of wish I have videos where I kind of try to explain like I have even had this long running thing I can't remember now that there was a video I made where it's just not quote-unquote a front-end engineering interview video something like that and I mean I can do the same thing for back-end or if it's DevOps or whatever but it kind of boils down to the same problem so the problem that this person is asking me to describe is literally the same sort of problem as asking okay what's the difference between a professional football player and someone who is just really really good it's a range of things it's all everything from in-depth knowledge to experience to you know soft skills etc etc it's a uh, it's the difference between talking to a teenager and talking to an adult uh, when I talk to an average candidate it literally the questions that we ask uh, that it's actually that's what's so beautiful and I in my opinion at the very least with a decent quote-unquote uh, recruitment process it doesn't have to be very complicated and all of the the key element is really twofold I mean I, I mean in my personal process would have four steps but I mean I work in companies where we just boil that down to two steps it's not as effective in my opinion but it works and it works really really well because it has one key element and that is bum, ba, bum, personal interview with senior software developers or at least very experienced software developers with some semblance of uh, personal maturity and of course skills knowledge these sorts of things uh, the reason why that works so effectively is because when you're interviewing a candidate, and this is also why I tell people, if if the company knows what they're doing, there is no way for you to fool to trick yourself through the process. The only time that works for like, and it, it is usually kind of funny because the reason why it, uh, a lot of people seem to get this idea that a bootcamp level developer is good enough is because a lot of like either because a lot of companies. Uh, or some at the very least, they have they have no clue what they're looking for, and a lot of the consultancies hire literally anybody off the street that can convince them because they themselves don't even know how they don't know how to test a software developer. But in other videos, I've explained that the problem with them is that they don't really care if they have good people. They care about being able to sell those people, and if their customers are as ignorant as they are, that doesn't matter because they're still going to get paid. So. When I talk with this, like a, a standard uh, bootcamp level developer, I ask, I actually, we ask the same questions. Usually, it's the same standard question I would ask a junior software developer, and it's the same questions I will ask a senior. The beautiful part about having a personal interview with someone who's fairly experienced, and ideally, that's the key thing for the company. Because the problem with this is that if you have software developers doing the interview who themselves are either not so good or can't be trusted or not very mature like because that's uh, it's I'm sorry to say that's the problem with this there are some senior software developers who've never hired anybody who've never like they're not even honest with themselves and they go and like they put really weird unreasonable expectations on the candidates such as oh this person didn't write any unit tests in their code test therefore we should dismiss them and I kind of go dude I've reviewed at least four of your pull requests this week and you didn't write any tests why do you expect that from the candidate so it's it's a really it's a tricky thing and this is i believe one of the reasons why this is not as common as it should be but it should be the ideal 
and once you have this the difference is very obvious to someone who knows their stuff because as an example if I ask a simple question such as can you uh, uh, can you explain to me what a promise is and how async await fits into promises the average candidate will not be able to answer that question they will not be able to uh, lo the most common wrong answer I get is that oh yeah that's um, that's w when you use fetch or that's when you use Axios and I go yeah that's great but what is a promise like well, can you explain the concept why why like why do we need it like how how does it work and they can't not at all like uh, they do have no knowledge of it it's the same thing if you ask somebody could you explain a little bit about how you work with CSS what type of CSS architectures or like your setups have you been working with and the only answer they give is, oh, I've, I've, I've used Bootstrap. Okay, you've used Bootstrap. So if you have, like, that, and that's a problem because if you've only used Bootstrap, and I ask, okay, but have you at least looked at like other, like other ways of doing it and so forth? And then of course I look. I actually got that. It wasn't that long ago. I got a personal message from a candidate when we sent them a code test. This is the same code test everybody gets uh, within the company that I was working at. Everybody, junior level all the way up to master level. We've had tons of people being recruited through this process, no problems whatsoever. The candidate sends me a personal message saying that I couldn't make this thing look the way you wanted to because I'm still I have I am um, because I'm not able to recreate the exact layout with bootstrap. There was no requirement for the person to use Bootstrap. They could have solved this problem with regular old CSS, or like there are tons of ways to solve this problem, and they could not do it because the only way they knew how to solve the problem was with Bootstrap, and Bootstrap wasn't able to help them fix that problem. That is not a professional grade software developer. That is an amateur or a bootcamp level developer who has learned exactly one tool to do one simple thing and that is to create a layout using that tool that's not what a, a serious software developer does a serious software developer a true professional is knowledge has enough knowledge about in this case it's front end about the ecosystem to understand that bootstrap is not going to fit creating a custom application that looks like this because bootstrap is not designed to give you exactly this custom experience. There are situations when Bootstrap would be a very good solution, but here it's probably better to use something simpler, something a little bit, either just use vanilla JavaScript, or you could just, you know, in this case it was a React application, you could inline things and just use style elements, or st like the st style attributes and things like that. There are many ways to solve that problem, but the person cannot solve the problem without leveraging a very specific tool. That is the difference between a profession, like the, the main big difference between a real professional and someone who's just taking a few courses. And unfortunately, as I said earlier, it's not possible for me, and I know that this sucks, guys, but I cannot sit here for 10 minutes and explain the difference between a professional and an average candidate when it can be so many things. It really comes down to your maturity as a software developer. Have you built enough products to be able to say basically that if I ask you a simple thing, like, can you uh, create, set up a React application with, say, Webpack configuration, CSS and JS support, and SSR support, or like some uh, like basic set of uh, technical requirements? You should just be able to say, yeah, I might not know exactly all of the, those tools, but just kind of go, yeah, I can do that, or I can set that up, and then deliver that according to specification. Because that, at the at the end of the day, guys. It's the same thing I tell people when um, when they start working with me or like when I do the interviews with them and so forth. You don't have to impress me. You just have to convince me that if I say that, yeah, we should hire you, that when I send you to one of the product teams, your non-technical product manager is going to come to you and the designer is going to come to you and ask, hey, can you make this thing look this way and work this way? That's all they're going to tell you, and everything in between is up to you to fix. But the problem is that we're not using Bootstrap, so you have to figure it out some other way. So what I want you to take away from this is that 
the reason why I can't give you a perfect understanding of the difference between a average candidate that comes through the door looking for like programming work and a professional is because the difference is, as I said, it's like trying to explain the difference between an adult and a teenager. It's measurable to the point where if you understand what it means to be an adult, you realize that in a teenager may have certain elements, but they're not quite just there yet. And it often comes down to personal maturity, comes down to tool knowledge, it comes down to experience with different problems and challenges within the role. A lot of front-end developers, back-end developers, it doesn't matter who you are, they face the same sort of experiences because most of the problems that we all face are well, they're a little bit different, but they're very similar in many ways as well. And that's how a senior software developer identifies another senior software developer because we, you've had many of the same experiences. And the best metric, if you want to check yourself whether or not you're a professional or not, is basically to, to understand that if you leverage, if you have no ability to solve a standard problem, such as say CSS or setting things like that, uh, setting up like a basic uh, development environment or something like that, without leveraging a tool that basically does everything for you, then you know, you are not by the definition of a lot of serious software companies, a professional software developer. It's not that you can't become that person, it's just that you can't stop learning when you've just learned, say, Bootstrap or Create React App, because there's more involved when you're working on more serious projects. Have a great day.